So we got Jermarcus Hardrick with us on video chat this morning, or, or it's morning here. I'm not sure where Jermarcus Yoshi joins us from. So let's check. He's in Nebraska, Clark tells me. How you doing, Yoshi? I'm doing good, man. How about you? Hey, good, good. I said the guys, Yoshi probably won't remember me because you were here with a brief time in 2015, but you're a very unforgettable guy. We certainly all remember you. And I got to ask you this. How is pandemic times for you in terms of keeping busy? And I know you got kids. How are things in the life of Jermarcus Hardrick? Uh, it's been good. I actually got a lot of time to spend with my family. I actually give my wife a chance to get a break. I actually got a chance to get healed up from a lot of aches and bruises. Um, actually getting a chance to get a head start on want to be a referee in the future and start on my master's. So I'm actually getting a lot of things done, but I'm missing football and I'm definitely missing Canada, man. Well, I bet. And honestly, we miss you. I don't know what it is that I think about you a lot. I'm always watching for you on the field, especially when the Bombers score a touchdown. I was telling the story earlier how you always sprint down to the end zone to celebrate with the quarterback. Uh is that just happened? Did you start doing that in college or something? Have people talked to you about that? Yeah, I think it started when I was in high school. I just started having a lot of fun. Uh, I don't think I was good as the other guy, so I was. I don't know if I started off getting more attention or I was just really having fun. But I've always been a guy who wanted to have a lot of fun, who wanted to run around, who wanted to do something different. And I was trying to – I wasn't always the fastest or strongest guy, so I was trying to out-hustle guys or do the, do something to give me a little edge over something to make a team. And, man, it's just a part of my game now. I just like to bring energy. I like to bring a lot of fun. I like to keep my teammates up. And, man, I like to win and celebrate. Well, you might not be the fastest, but on most fields you are the biggest. And, uh, and by the way, for those that don't know, I mentioned your CFL time, but before that with the Saints, then the Utah Blaze, the Tampa Bay Storm. But you really – Yoshi have settled in in Winnipeg, and it seems like they love you as much as you love being there. Can you talk about that special season of 2019? Uh, 2019, man. I just think over the years, I've been there for four years now, just everything we've built over the four years, the trust, the buzz, the relationship with the coaches all came together. And 2019 was a lot of guys who came in with a lot of personal accomplishments they wanted to get, a, get done. And by the time we hit week 18, week 19, we all had one goal in mind, and that was the Grey Cup. And I think the difference between this year and a lot of the years was we had a lot of leadership. We had a lot of guys that knew their role. We had a lot of guys that didn't care about the stats. I, I don't know if we had that in the past, but it was just so selfless this year. And we just got a lot done, and a lot of guys just took pride in what they did just to come to work, the pride the guys had to come to work, the things they didn't want to leave anything unchecked, and – the extra work we put in, man. I think this is just testament to Coach O'Shea and Wade, man. They, you guys work so hard, you just see that and you can feel that and you want to work as hard as them and feel that championship. You know, I talked to guys that were guest coaches in camp with you guys and they came out of Winnipeg going, no, they're going to win it. Like you could just tell with the attitude and just the sense that you guys had that you meant business. And then that day, Grey Cup Sunday, Yoshi, tell me about that because from what I hear in warm-ups, you guys knew that you were going to blow away the Thai Cats. You absolutely brutalized them. You didn't give them a chance. What was that day like, Grey Cup Sunday, uh, you know, within that locker room before the game and carrying it out onto the field? Before the game, I think it's just every day we, from the couple games, we were just building, building that confidence, building that, building everything we need to go in that game. So by the time game day hit, it didn't matter who we were playing. We just had it. We had one more game in us, and we was going to lay it all on the line for the guys next to us, for the equipment manager. It was so much bigger than us, man. It was for the Winnipeg. It was, man, we was one step away, man. And you could feel it in one month, man. Like, usually sometimes in one month, you're like, okay, I need to get hit. Okay, they'll come to me later. And warm-ups, I felt like, man, this is everything I work for. I don't have anything hurting on me. I'm as loose as I've been for a game. Just the atmosphere and the chemistry you felt from your teammates. It was just a great feeling. Then when Zach, just the calm presence of Zach Blairs in the locker room, I don't know, a lot of guys not beside the quarterback, but I'm right beside Zach in the locker room. I don't think he said one thing. I think he had his hand over his mouth, and I think he was just looking at his nose. And every time somebody came, he gave him a fist bump, and, that's basically that's basically all. It was no talking needed. It was time to go to work, and that's that's the mindset we had. Yoshi, when did you know you had it? When did you know the game was won and they weren't coming back? Man, I don't because the CFL game is so crazy. I, it had to be somewhere in the third or fourth quarter, and I uh, I don't know if we had an interception or it was another scratch a sack script. 
but we was up by two or we was up by a pretty good mark. We needed a – we got a field goal, I think. And I was like, man, it's a three-score game. I just don't see us giving up three scores and not scoring again. I didn't want to get too happy. But I don't know, man. Your your core, My core got shook. My core, my core hasn't been shook a lot of my life. And I think when Metlock hit one of those field goals, my – I don't know. I could, I could, my, it's starting to feel it right now. I started like, man, I think we really did. I think it really happened. I was just so shook to the core. I don't know if I even finished the game out the way, way I needed to. I was just so like, man, we really did it. So it had to be somewhere late in the third or early fourth. It was a field goal to Metlock hit to put us up by three scores. And, man, it's one of those feelings i never forget. I got to ask you too, Jamarcus, with, you mentioned Zach a couple of times. You know, the stats aren't there. He's not the biggest guy, but I've always said he's just a great leader. There's something about guys that they win. They might not have the best stats or the best arm or whatever. I mean, just looking back, can you imagine Zach walking into your locker room in the middle of October and it's like, it's your team, Zach. Like the position that he was put in and how he, uh, what should I say, came out on top of that? Like if he thought about that, it couldn't have been easy for Zach at the time. Couldn't have been easy at all. I think about it a lot. I actually have a group chat with a couple of linemen, man, from the day Zach got there until the end of the Great Cup until now. The respect that he came in with, the respect that he gave when he came in. He um he was very quiet. He was very seeing how we how things ran our way. He didn't want to step on any toes, but he wanted to show guys that he was ready to work. He was willing to speak up in me. He was willing not to be the new guy and be quiet and he was quiet around the locker room and things too. He got to know people. But as far as in the meeting room, the things that he saw, he didn't wait till the weekend. He didn't wait till later. He said it did, even if it didn't like it, even if it was hard on him or hard on the old lineman, but it was the best thing for the team. He wasn't scared to bring those conversations up. Just, just, I don't know how to fit it. He fit in like a glove, man. When he first got there, I don't know if we was on a bye. We had a couple of days off, but he went out to eat with the old lineman and a couple of guys. And we was like, Man, this guy's one of us. He's been he. It feels like we've known him my whole life, and just his vibe, man. He just he has one of those vibes that just brings you up, man. When Zach come in, I know he's not gonna say a lot, but I know it's time to work. He has a look on his face. I only seen it four games, but it's a look before game time. I know for the rest of my life if I see it, it's it's time to go to work. And what Zach did was amazing, man. He came in, he fit in, he led us. He was a great teammate, and man, my kids call him Uncle Zach now. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, you know, here's the thing. And you're, I know, Darren, you're just sitting here enjoying this interview, but he is, Zach is a leader. And he's a little prickly because you know what? He's going to say those things that Yoshi just said. And some people don't like to be told those things. But do you want to win or not? He brings the game up. And I think, Jim Marcus, you guys might win another great cup or two with Zach there because he has that ability. I was just worried about his head. And I'm sure you guys were too. And he's passed all those tests. Yes, he's passed all the tests. He's he's one of the tough guys I've been around. Only been around him for a month or so. But as far as coming in and going to work and fitting in with guys and uh, not showing us that he want to take a hit, we don't want you to get hit. But he wants to show us it, it's not even about his head. He's coming here for one goal, and that was to win a championship. And I don't. He didn't show us that was that was his only goal, man. And he showed us that. And he passed it. Now, just a couple questions about you before I let you go. That right tackle spot in Winnipeg was it? A situa- what is it with the scheme there, something that just fits your game? Because it just seemed like you were look- – everybody could see your talent, but you looked like you were looking for the right fit, and you found it in Winnipeg. What is it for you that fits there on that bomber roll line? Uh, being nasty, being able to run around, being able to use my athleticism. I know it's a passing league, but we, we, we get to pound the ball over there. I get to run around. I get to hit DBs. They use them a lot in the screen games. I get a lot – get to be in open field a lot. So basically, I don't know. They they get to let this big body roam around. They get to let me get out in the open field. Get to let me have fun, hit people. And uh, Winnipeg, there was a lot of hardworking people. When I first got there, there was a lot of guys who'd been cut, and a lot of guys looking was on their last leg. And and then, I don't know, man. Oaks put us all together, and it was all it was perfect, man. We was all guys that was hungry to prove that we belong somewhere, and somebody give us a fair shot. I don't. I just think I I got a shot with Winnipeg, and I, I took it and I rolled with it. I was just great to have the people around me. Yeah, and you're still rolling with it one day at a time. Um, and also the name Yoshi. How many times have you had to explain to people that don't know who Yoshi is why that's your nickname? Um, I had explained a couple of times, but I don't mind. I, I didn't know my dad growing up, and I had a best friend named Mario. And we was going to Boys and Girls Club every day. 
And every day we got the Boys and Girls Club. Everybody was like, here's go Mario and Yoshi, Mario and Yoshi. And I used to fight people about it all the way up into seventh grade. Don't call me Yoshi. And I think about seventh grade, I found out who my real dad was. It was actually me and Mario had the same dad. And, man, Mario and Yoshi meant a lot more to me. So from that day on, when I found out, I was like, I, I go by Yoshi. And I already looked up to Mario like as one of my best friends and big brothers. And for him to actually be one of my stepbrothers is – that's why the name really means a lot to me. Yeah, well, you're universally known as that across the CFL now. And I didn't actually, I thought it was because you played the video game a ton as a kid. I didn't realize that was a story. That's a way better story. Yeah, that's the, that's the story there. Yeah, I was a more of a Sonic Sonic guy growing up. I wasn't a Mario guy. But yeah, <laughs> I met my brother Mario, Mario and Yoshi, man. That's how it started. Well, that is an outstanding story. Well, Yoshi, it's been great catching up. I know you were here in a brief time, but people still talk about you here too. You're loved here too, man. So I appreciate it. Good luck with all you're doing. I hope to see you on a field soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You take care, man. Love everything you're doing, man. Thank you. Good seeing you. Jamarcus Hardrick joining us from Nebraska today. Now, if you're supporting the CFL, you're supporting a guy like that. How do you like that? It's pretty clear, right? There's good people all across this league and great stories across the league and a whole ton of history, and it's made up of guys like that, right? They've been doing this for 100 years. We've got to find a way to make sure that we you know, support the CFL and guys like that. It's becoming a bit of a theme today. It is. But it was nice catching up with him again. I just... <laughs> Six five three nineteen, and every time the Bombers score a touchdown, look out for Yoshi because he's going to be bum 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 down the field to grab the quarterback and throw him up I in the air. Love that story too. It's like, hey brother, what's up? And you know, stop calling me Yoshi. Wait, we are brothers. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Like I love it. I know it's so great. It's like in another episode of the Ranch. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a break and be back. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be talking a little more CFL Sim. We'll get serious with Jason Kurzweil. I mean, I assume that's supposed to be a serious conversation, isn't it, from the University of Calgary about Canada West sports? So lots to get to today. Still plenty of time left in hour two. It's episode 260 of Canada's Morning Sports Talk Show. We'll be right back on Facebook Live. Listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.